Valentine's Day was fast approaching, and Barry had finally found the perfect gift for Lainey. How long have you been here? Been in here since the crack of dawn, but it all makes sense once you see my masterpiece. Hello. Ah! Was that a scream of delight? That was terror. Seriously, this thing is gonna haunt me forever. In a good way? Who gets haunted in a good way? Kevin Costner and Field of Dreams. Okay, that was a fantastic example, but this thing is beyond disturbing. Thing? It looks like Sloth from the Goonies got botched plastic surgery. All right. Any uh, Goldberg fans in the house? <laughs> nice, nice. So uh, full disclosure, I'm uh, an 80s person, 80s buff, right. so I feel like I'm also reliving my childhood when I watch the Goldbergs. <laughs> Now, I know you guys have, like, Weird Al Yankovic is on the episode tonight. Yep, yep. You're a little bit younger than I am. Do you know who all these people are going in, or do, is it sort of like a learning process for you? I do know the majority of people that I feel like come on the show. Um, there are some things that come up that are 80s related, I guess, that I don't know because I was born in 94. Um, but it's usually I get everything. The things I don't get are, like, the games or certain movies, but most of the time... What are, what are some of the things you learned about the 80s that uh, you didn't know going in? New Kids on the Block, you knew them? I, definitely. Okay. I mean, I wasn't, like, completely blind to 80s, but it wasn't like I could immediately go, like, oh, I, here's a New Kids song that I can sing, you know? And uh, how does the... Like, have, do you love the 80s now? Like, has this been great? Or are you, like, kind of sick of everything 80s since your show is all about the 80s and every week it's something new? Well, I feel like before I was on the show, my perception of the 80s was even crazier than what it actually is because a lot of people that I know who lived through the 80s and grew up in that time were like... Anyone here live in the 80s besides me? Okay, yeah. good, good. <laughs> so, Where's dad? Her dad's here. Better somewhere in there. Yeah, he's somewhere in there. <laughs> so um, before, you know, we would have like 80s day at school and we would just wear the most ridiculous neon outfits. And while that is a part of it, on, on the show at least, like we've toned it down a lot. And a lot of the clothes that I wear, or my character wears, are from like Forever 21 and American Apparel, so. Interesting. Yeah, it's like coming back around. So, so. they're able to bring it all back around. So what, what are your favorite now, I know your character has some favorites, like your character's a New Kids on the Block fan, but what about you? What, what's your favorite like boy band from the 80s now, a favorite movie? From the 80s? Yeah, for you, for you Ooh. personally. I mean, if movie, probably Breakfast Club, but I feel like everyone. Oh yeah, that's a good one, that's a good yep. one. Yeah, that's a popular one. <laughs> um, I guess New Kids, uh, I, I don't know, there's so many, but my favorite song of all time from the 80s was I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney Houston. Because when that song comes on, like, you can't not dance. Like, it's just so fun. And by the way, if you look online, she has some amazing cover songs. Is that, is that going to be a future, a future cover song for you? Actually, yeah. I've done, like, a short version of it on my uh, Instagram, but... Me and my band, whenever we perform in L.A., actually March 20th, we're at the Hotel Cafe, and I'm going to be doing my cover of I Want to Dance with Somebody. Ooh, all right. We're going to have to check it out. <laughs> I was thinking, when I, last night I was watching a lot of your songs, and um, I'm a big fan of, do you know who Poison is? Every Rose mm. Has Its Thorn. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a good one. Yeah. I love that song. Really good. you want to sing. If you want to sing later, we can. <laughs> Um, so tell me, the show's in its third season. It's doing even better now. Like, what's it been like to be on the show? Now, a, a hit TV show, ABC, and something's been really growing over the last few seasons. It's kind of crazy because I started out as a singer. I never intended to be an actress, and it kind of just happened. And so I got very lucky to have been put on a show that's not only hilarious that I would watch and love if I wasn't on it, but one that's doing so well. And um, the writing's incredible, and I think that's why people really resonate with it. And it's just really funny, and a lot of people can connect to the different characters and dynamics or the fact that, you know, 80s is so nostalgic for certain people. So it was, it's so fun to work on it, and coming into work every day, it's like not really going to work. How did you get cast as, uh, as Erica on the show? Was it just a cold like, audition or they, they kind of knew you from singing or how did that all come about? Uh, I did just audition like everybody else, but I actually sent in a self tape. Um, you do well with those, by the way. Thanks, yeah. I, <laughs> so I sent in a tape and I got very lucky that I was apparently the very first person that they saw for this role. And um, they kind of, what they told me, they was like, oh, we just had to bring her back in. And which is crazy to me because I'd gotten callbacks before on certain things, but I'd never done a screen test or anything like that. So going into my first screen test and not only booking the role, but then having it go to full series and then doing another season. It's just like, what is happening right now? <laughs> so I love it, though. And what and obviously the show's based on uh, Adam, Adam Goldberg's life. Um, what has it been like working with him and uh, portraying? I, you're 
technically portraying his older brother. Yeah. Um, but they needed they needed a, a girl in the show for sure. You bring a lot to the show. What's it been like working with Adam and I guess living out his life in a TV show? Adam F. Goldberg is awesome. Um, he wouldn't mind me saying that he's quite the nerd because I think everybody that works on the show knows that. If you go in his office, he has just like shelves and shelves of different action figures and comic books and different things. What kind of action figures? Sorry, I'm a little bit I mean, he's myself. obsessed with Star Wars, so okay. everything Star Wars is owned by Adam Goldberg. So, uh, But he's so great, and he's really great at guiding us in the right direction of what he wants. And the show is very true to what his family is, and he wants to make sure that you know he's honest about everything. So if we're doing one of the flashback scenes at the end of the episode when they air like his... Uh, home video, he has to make sure that when we shoot the scene with the cast that kind of reflects that home video, that the shirts are exactly the same, that the props are exactly the same. So he's very particular. But in that way, I think he makes it even more special for viewers. Interesting. Inter have you met, and I saw an interview a few years ago, you hadn't met Eric yet. Have you met Eric? The I character? have met Eric. Okay, what was that? What did you guys talk about? Is he happy with their portrayal? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure at first he was probably like, Adam, why are you making me a girl on the show? Um, but he's super nice. Um, and when I had met him, he was like, hi, my name's Eric. I'm like, hi, Eric. And he's like, no, 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 I'm Eric. I'm the Eric. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but super cool. And his whole family's really sweet. And um, yeah, he's been nothing but supportive about it. He's never been like, why did you do this with the character? <laughs> I think with Adam Goldberg, he had such a big age gap between him and his oldest brother that he didn't have a lot of storylines to pull from, I feel like. And so he decided to make it a, a female character, um, which I appreciate, obviously. Um, and so then it was kind of like we just had to guess along the way like what we were going to do with the character. And my character was not supposed to sing originally. And I said, you know, if you ever have an opportunity for me to do music, like let's see if we can make that happen. So I got very lucky that they've been able to work with me so well on all of it. Yeah, what have your favorite episodes been so far? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, we just did one that I can't really talk about because it's coming up soon. But oh, all I can say... You can say, talk about it, it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's one of our big tribute episodes. Um, there's a lot of dancing involved, and oh. I'm super excited because I had to do a lot. Where's of the fun ABC stunts. person? Can't you talk about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't tell Adam. Yes. No. Um, yeah. So I'm really. That one was probably one of my favorite ever to film, and it's coming out pretty soon. Um, other than that, I think the big tribute episode with Ferris Bueller, where I had to do a scene with Charlie Sheen, was unreal because <laughs> you know coming from somebody who never even knew that acting was going to be a part of my life and then to be doing a scene with somebody like Charlie Sheen I was like where am I <laughs> crazy what um, was that like let's just stop there for a second what, yeah. what was it like working with <laughs> I Charlie know everyone's Sheen wondering. <laughs> uh, he was actually super professional and so kind and on top of it um, but everybody was very nervous for him to come to set. We all were, like, silent. Like, were they nervous for you, I imagine, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but m more than anything, just, like, we don't, we didn't know him. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know what he was actually like. Because, um, you know, media portrays things all different ways. And so he came to set super kind and very hardworking and contributed to the scene in so many ways. So it was actually a really great scene to film. Awesome. Any, any 80s stuff that you want to do that the show hasn't done yet? I really think that it would be cool if one of our big tribute episodes would be um, Breakfast Club, where Barry and Erica and Lainey are all like in detention together and the JTP. I think there's a lot of funny things that could come out of that. I like where your head's at. Yeah, you know? Oh, was there a Goonies? I know there was a Goonies reference there. Yes. But was there a Goonies episode? There was, season one. That was okay. our big tribute movie. And I had actually never seen the Goonies before. So See, this is. I know. That was, one, that was one of the big ones that everybody was like, you haven't seen the Goonies? Um, but we did the episode. It was really fun. Actually, that's not true. The reason why it wasn't fun is because Troy and I were very, very sick, and we had to, like, crawl through small spaces and ride our bikes, and it was, like, freezing outside, and we were just miserable because we were so sick. Oh, no, but no. it came out to be a great episode. You have so much good stuff from the 80s. I feel like it's... Oh, yeah. You, you have enough for, like, 20 seasons, yeah. given, the, I mean, given the oddness of We have of 10 it. years of things that happened. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you a little bit about, um, well, let's go at it this way. We're going to talk about your childhood. But if you were going to make a TV show like the Goldbergs, but about your childhood in the 90s, 2000s, okay. uh, what, would that, what would we be seeing on the show? Like, 
Obviously, on the Goldbergs, your dad sits in his underwear on the couch. Does your dad do that in real life? Your Not dad? Not really. Like, what, what are the quirks of your family? Uh, sorry, Dad. I'm... <laughs> uh, I have to see your dad backstage, so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm an only child, so it, I feel like it would be pretty boring because <laughs> there's, like, only certain things that have gone on. But, you know, me and my family get along so well. Nothing crazy goes on. I think more than anything, I would just pull a lot from, like, Backstreet Boys and Spice Girls types things. Because for me, I'm like, every time I see 90s anything, I'm like, oh, boy bands and girl groups. But um, I don't know. I feel like my life is a TV show half the time because it's just weird things that just kind of come. I started out, like, just in Highland Village, Texas. like. Yeah, how did you get into music and acting and everything else gr growing up in Texas? It says you turned pro Right, yeah. by 13. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like, I'm sure you were like, when did the music bug sort of hit you and... What does it mean to be turning pro? Like, what was that step? Well, I, like, found out I was a singer, I guess you would say. I don't know. That I wanted to sing when I was, like, nine, um, also by accident, because I was driving in the car with a family friend, and I was singing to the radio, and she turns the radio off, and she was like, wait, do that again? And I was nine. I was like, okay. So I sang again, and she was like, oh, my gosh, you have to sing for your parents when you get home. And I didn't know what that, like, anything came out of that. So I went to sang Amazing Grace when I got home from my parents' a cappella, and they were like, wow, do you want to take lessons? And I was like, sure. So it's kind of like the equivalent of if a kid was like, oh, do you want to play soccer? Yeah, I'll try it. And so it started out kind of like, let's see. And then I realized how much I loved it. Um, and so I would just sing like in choir, at, like school plays or whatever. And then turning pro for me meant... Um, I, you know, sang background vocals for, like, Hannah Montana CDs and things like that at, like, 14. And um, so it was, like, first started about background vocals. And then I did a song where I actually sang the lead vocals um, on, like, Tinkerbell 2 soundtrack. And so I just kind of started doing certain things within the music industry that I guess the average 14-year-old wouldn't do. And so I guess that would be considered turning pro. And you went to public school through elementary and mm -hmm. then sort of stopped at that point. No, okay, I actually or... stayed in public school until my junior year of high school. Oh, okay. okay. I found it very important um, that even though I really wanted to be in this industry, that, you know, I wanted to have those normal things like go to the football games with everybody or go to prom or walk for graduation because I, you see a lot of these child stars come out of it and, like, really just go south because I feel like they didn't have that real experience and things that, all, you know, we grow up with that just everybody relates to. And so that was very important for me. But then I was on X Factor in 2011. And I was I gonna ask, and that was a tape. You sent in a tape. Yeah, right? it was selected. a tape. <laughs> so I wasn't able to continue my senior year of high school in public school, which was very sad for me because that's like everyone's favorite year. Um, but, you know, I still graduated. So yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, that's good. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about Lakota Rain, and now it's a few years out, but what was that experience like? I hear, I hear thumbs up from the front. Yeah. By the way, you have a lot of Lakota Rain fans yes. on all over the place when I was watching the videos. So what was that experience like first, just being on X Factor and, and then, I guess, getting thrown together with three other girls and having Paula Abdul as, uh, yeah. as a mentor? Um, I never wanted to audition for X Factor either. I feel like it's so funny, all these things. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. And then it just kind of happened. Um, How did it happen? Well, my mom was like, Haley, you really have to audition for this new show, X Factor, because Simon Cowell's doing it. And I was like, I don't know, mom. Sometimes people come out of that show and they're recognized, but like no one wants to listen to their music afterwards, even if they win. And that for me was like, you know, I'm... 17 when I auditioned and I was like I don't want to have my peak at 17 so I auditioned just to please her via self-tape and sent it in last minute and they were only going to look at the first what like 800 or 8,000 something like okay. I know that's a big difference wow. but it was eight something and um so they I guess they looked at my tape and while I was sitting in the audience watching the judges round in Dallas, I got a phone call from the producers saying we want you to come to Seattle and audition in front of the judges. So I was like, whoa, okay, like why not? Um, and I did and I made it all the way through the end of boot camp and was eliminated as a solo artist. And I thought that was it and I was like, I can't believe this is happening to me, I'm gonna go home now. But. Um, they brought me back on stage with three girls that I did not know, or all from different parts of yeah. the world. And um, they said, you know, you guys can stay in the competition if you are a country pop girl group, and we'll just see what happens from there. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, I guess we're going to make this happen. So we 
came, came together and um, made a group called Lakota Rain. And it was a country pop girl group and yeah. we stayed to like ninth place. And yeah, it was, it was a crazy, crazy experience. What was that like working with uh, Paula Abdul and, and the show? Paula was so sweet to us. Like she loved us um, on the show. And she, I feel like, and I guess I can only speak for her because she was our mentor, but it felt like she was the only one that would come and actually work with us outside of cameras being on. And that was, we really appreciated that because, you know, not only was this the biggest experience all four of us had ever done in our lives, but it was, you know, like difficult to come together as a group when four voices had never met before. Yeah. So she was incredible in, in that way. Do you still talk to the other members of Lakota? Will there be a reunion? And do you still talk to the members? <laughs> actually, four years had gone by and we had not seen each other and we had met up in LA and had a really fun night. But actually, I'm still best friends with one of the girls, um, Carrie Fletcher, who now goes by Fletcher and is putting out amazing pop music. Um, and I've been staying at her apartment. So we've nice. been hanging out and it's so much fun. Like I made lifelong friends on that show. That's fantastic. And, you know, the singing career, I guess I'm, I want to ask you, if you had to choose between a massive singing career and a massive TV or movie career, which would you pick? Oh, that's tough. I mean, music is always my first love, so I would love to do that. And I continue to do that and travel to Nashville to work on country pop music as a solo artist. But with acting, you know, it's something that I kind of grew to love. And I hope that I can continue to do it. And I'm still going auditions for different movies or hoping that the show continues to go for years and years because it's just so much fun for us. Definitely. And you have a whole bunch of new songs that are out right now. Uh, Love Sick. Talk to me a little about your new songs. And you have an EP coming out in a few months as well. Um, yeah, I did put out two songs. There was Love Sick and Until Then. And then I have the Spanish version of Until Then, Hasta Verte, that I put out on iTunes and Spotify and all that good stuff. And for me, uh, I'm just super excited to put out more music in my EP and a music video because all these songs are ones that um, are things that really happen to me and that I really connect with. And it's very important for me to make sure that every line in the song is exactly true to the situation because I feel like as a singer, that's the best way to portray, in all honesty, like you know, a story. And people can listen to it and go, oh, I totally get that. So I'm super excited to start doing more music. Was it a conscious choice to be to go sort of more country with the music versus pop? Like, or was that a, was that a product of the X Factor just being thrown into uh, a, a country music group, or how, how did you decide to like kind of go in the direction of country for your music? It's funny because I grew up listening to like R and B soul kind of music, as well as pop and other things, but mostly like R and B. And I wanted to do that kind of music, um, and that's what I was leaning towards when I started X Factor. And then when we did a country pop girl group, I was like, okay, maybe I can do country pop. Um, but I still was hesitant towards it for a while because I didn't really know a lot of country. Um, I only knew, I mean, I loved Carrie Underwood and, and everything like that, but I didn't like really dive into it. And then after I, I tried songwriting and everything I wrote came out very much like a country song. And I couldn't deny it anymore. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go where my songwriting is taking me. And so is, like, is Love Sick, is that inspired by true events? Or, or what is your inspiration for the songs? Uh, Love Sick is inspired by true events. It Ooh. is inspired by a boy. Um, pretty much I wrote the song about um, a scenario where, and I think a lot of people go through this, especially girls, where there's the bad boy that like you know you shouldn't like, but you can't help but like him anyways. And you're like, oh, well, I'll change him. That's a joke. Um, <laughs> so don't, don't <laughs> well, that's think. That's the song. <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, it's I'm um, lovesick, sick of love. And it's, um, yeah, it's very true to this person in this scenario. And while I'm sure that makes some people uncomfortable, it's, to me, I'm so proud being able to look back at the lyrics and go, okay, not only does that tell the story, but there are double meanings in there for me that I just like feel accomplished looking back at. Yeah. Yeah. So that's trouble for anyone that wants to date you, correct? Do not mess up <laughs> yeah, or you will a be Taylor in a song. Swift. Yeah. We'll pull a Taylor Swift. That's what you need to say on first dates. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, like, do not mess around. Don't break my heart because I'm going to pull a Taylor Swift and write songs about you. <laughs> um, no, but I really will. <laughs> not in like a bad way, but they're, you know. I, I, <laughs> that's, that's where you just, get your inspiration from, exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. And everyone relates. Obviously, everyone has their heart broken yeah, in some probably why I'm so. single. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone's like, oh. You know, it's funny. So I kind of, I'm always trying to like do research on people. Like, you know, so I was looking up, you know, 
did you have a boyfriend online and stuff. The fact that you did the Justin Bieber boyfriend song is like the perfect cover because that's all that comes up. I is you singing Justin Bieber so if I was your this. boyfriend. Um, it's a good, you did a good I job. I didn't do it seriously. So just so <laughs> I wasn't like, if I was your boyfriend. Like me and my friend Tim Halperin decided like, okay, we know Justin Bieber's coming out with a song and we want to be one of the first people to put a video out on YouTube. So we spent the entire night learning the song and like making this quirky, stupid video. And we put it out and it got like amazing views because it was yeah. one of the first ones. Um, but it was definitely like trying to be funny. And I, I think people- And I know you're a Bieber fan too. You sent him a video. We're going to go to all these yes. questions in a second, but I got to ask you, what do you think? Did you watch the Grammys? What do you think of his performance? I did. I actually, I have to say, I was very happy that he um, went back to his acoustic set in the beginning and kind of showed his artistry because a lot of people think like he's pulling the whole Chris Brown Usher thing where they sing a little bit during performances, but it's mostly about dancing, which is cool. But Justin Bieber actually can sing and he plays like so many instruments that I was really happy that he was kind of getting back into that. Yeah. Have you ever met him? I have not actually met him. Like, I'm Haley, hey, I'm Justin, yeah. but I go to church with him. What do you mean? Uh, long story short, there's, like, this weird underground church in L.A. that, like, a ton of weird, like, celebrities go to. And I stopped going because I was like, I'm not focusing on church anymore. It's all about, like, oh, my God, so-and-so's here. But, um, yeah, Justin Bieber goes to church, so at least he's on the right path, guys. Oh, interesting. Guys. And that's not, that's not Scientology, though. <laughs> That's Scientology, or that's just no, no, no. I'm not a Scientologist. Okay, okay. no, <laughs> no, not at all. It's, a new, it's just like Christian, new church. non-denominational okay. type. Okay, not a cult. You're not in a cult. No, I sw- I Justin hope not. If <laughs> that's I'm the not headline, going Haley in cult with Justin Bieber. <laughs> wow, I think we need like another 20 minutes just to dive into that. But we do have audience questions, so uh, let's get. Uh, you got your Lakota Rain fan right here in the front. <laughs> hello, hello. My name is Michael Schaefer. Hi. Um, I have two questions. First of all, uh, where do you think you'll see Erica going in season four of the show? Like, you think you'll go off to a close college? And do you think it's possible, since you have a, had a background in live TV on The X Factor, and we're on TV right now live, do you think they might be able to do a live Goldbergs episode, since Dirty Ooh. Rock did a live oh. episode once? That's pretty cool. Um, as far as Erica in season four goes, I don't know. I think they're they're getting into the whole Erica going to college thing. Um I'm not sure exactly what their ideas are for it because I kind of like learn as the writers go like where they're taking it. I hope Erica goes to a close college because that would mean I get to stay on the (laughs) show. Um, (laughs) So I'm actually to this local school. I know, like (laughs) as local as possible. Um, So I don't know where they're going to go with that. Um, But as far as a live show goes, that's pretty cool. I notice a lot of live new things are happening on TV, all those musicals that they do. So. Possibly, but I think there are so many things that go on with our show, and because it's uh, single camera, I don't know if we would ever do it. Yeah. The door's open. I can see Broadway musicals in your future with your such your singing and your acting. Yeah, being out here and seeing all of these musicals and everything going on, I was like, ooh, I never wanted to do it, but now I'm like, I don't know, yeah. I'm getting the bug. So if, if and when it. the Goldbergs ever ends, we'll see. Cool, cool. All right, we got Hi. right there in the back. Hi. I, um, I was just wondering if you ever had um, a particular sitcom you grew up on that you drew inspiration from for your show. Ooh. I grew up watching sitcoms, and I think that's why I resonated so much with the Goldbergs. Um, I grew, I mean, I, me and my dad would always watch Big Bang Theory and like, uh, oh my gosh, what else was there? How I Met Your Mother is a big one for me. I And I always watch sitcoms. Like, I'm always on Netflix watching sitcoms that I missed out on, so I was not in the whole The Office thing until way later. But I love pulling from things like that and looking at these different characters and, and these people who are amazing at improv because that's the biggest issue for me as an actress is, like, how do you improv? How do you think that quickly? <laughs> like Wendy McLennan Covey, who plays Beverly on the show, she is so good at improv that it's amazing and inspiring just watching her in a scene. Cool. Sorry, I don't know if that answered your question, but... <laughs> Uh, my name is Zach. I live in Nashville. So oh, cool. thank you nice. for coming to our show. Give it up so for yeah. Nashville in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so so what is your favorite thing about being in Nashville? Just a personal question for me. Honestly, food. They have the best food in Nashville. Oh, you're in New York though. I'm such a foodie. Um but yeah, I mean you're talking about Nashville, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know, like it's such a cool vibe. There's a lot of really great hipster coffee shops and 
everybody's there, everybody there is focused on music and being out in LA, all my friends are actors, all of them. And so being in Nashville, it's really exciting for me because being a singer, first and foremost, I get to be around people who really um, connect with that. And we just sit down and we songwrite and it's fun and I miss being there. If you like hipster coffee shops, we have a whole lot in Brooklyn we can send you to. Good. So it's like I a whole coffee. borough full of hipster coffee shops. So <laughs> Good. We, we, can got, we got that covered. Yeah, right here. We're going to take our final question from an online viewer. So Matthew would like to know, what is the best part about working on an 80s style show for you? Mm, the best part about working on an 80s style show, I think really the fashion, even though like I know Wendy doesn't like a lot of the things that we have to wear or... You know, sometimes I, I put on things and I'm like, really? This is ridiculous. But in a way, it's just so fun because you don't get to do that on other shows. Everything else is very modern. And um, I, the one thing I miss, though, is we used to do really fun 80s hair because that's like the big thing about the 80s is the big hair. But we had to tone it down a lot over the years. And so I'm like, dang it. I wish we could do the big perm. I think you should bring it back just in real life. I think you should. I definitely could, but my hair is so flat. I don't know (laughs) if I could keep it up. (laughs) I don't know. I got to bring back the big hair. But uh, Haley, it's been awesome having you. We wish you the best of luck. We're all cheer. Give it up for Haley, the Goldbergs. (laughs) Buy her new songs. Get her EP when it comes out. Thanks. There's a movie coming out. We'll be watching. Come back and see us again, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Take care, Haley. Thanks.